The Katana, capable of ridiculous single hits thanks to the triple crate combo and these just outrageous unbound combos of absolute fury, many simultaneous attacks, doubling and tripling up damage per hit, slashing about a hundred times, steamrolling through a kimono's health bar. This is done for a particular build for the Karakuri Katana that we're going to explain today. Now before we go over the build itself, I just need to explain the playstyle because there is an aspect of this build that will change the normal gameplay to a specific style of gameplay, where normally I would say you would just unbound blindly and use that as much as possible, this build has us dealing way more damage during our unbind, but it lasts less time, so there must be some intent behind it. Now, I'm going to assume you know the basics of Katana, but basically the idea is to do the light attack combo into a special, dealing with many Twin Blade Slash Storms, and then repeating that until you need to leave the area because the, the Kimono is going to hit you, or until you're basically out of stamina. This will generate a lot of damage, which is great, obviously, but then also hitting so many times like this, we're going to steadily build the gauge in a really efficient and effective way. Now that we have our gauge going, it's DPS time. The best burst that I'm able to get during one trap window is this. We unbind, then go straight into the heavy attack combo, which is the unbound EI slash. We let this ride all the way, doing ridiculous damage. Then press the special at the end to slide away, allowing us to reposition. The kimono should be reeling by now, but getting up, allowing for the triple crate slam. There it is, big damage, 5,201 single hit, and that's the full gauge basically used. This build is able to maximize your gauge for that full burst window I've just shown you. And we worked in a little bit to give that gauge a little bit more time to make that possible. So when you get your gauge going, it's time to place a trap. And what I mean by the trap is the double stake crate, double stake crate, Karakuri fusion transformation. As you can see, I get my gauge going, I place the trap, I wait for the kimono to walk into it, and then we go to town with that exact combo on the weakest point to get the most DPS. In this case, it's the head, but to be honest with you, with most kimono, it's going to be the head. The thing is, you can check and find out what is actually the weak point by going to the Cyclopedia. If we go to Golden Tempest here and go to the second page, we can see that the head is a five star softness, even when it is enraged. So that is the ideal point for me to target. Most kimono are going to be the weakest on their head, but some kimono give you other options like Deathstalker here that is five star in normal and enraged on the tail. So that could be an alternative target should you want that. Knowing where to put your big damage combo is going to lead to a bigger damage combo. So the build then. These names are probably not going to mean much to you, but I'm at least putting it on screen so that you can see them. But let's take a direct look in the equip menu. Starting with the armor and why, we have the Gruda hat, the chest piece, and the gloves. Those are the Ember Plume pieces. Ember Plume is an incredible kimono path focus set. This piece provides us with fatigue recovery, which is really important for the stamina recovery speed since we spend so much with the katana. Deaf Ears is a nice perk because, yeah, we don't have to deal with kimono roars. But solar protection is going to boost our attack and defense by 5% in every hunt. The only caveat is that we must be in the daytime to get the benefit of that. This just means that if it's night like it is now, you shouldn't actually be hunting when wearing an ember plume set because you won't be getting that benefit so going to your house in the hub and then resting until morning or midday if you want then that will solve the issue this is a process that takes a few seconds by just going to the hub and doing that and is well worth the effort because now we have that five percent attack and defense on our helm active next we have the chest piece which has blaze resilience which is nice but not important stamina recovery speed up when only a single life red remains this is going to always happen when you're doing some of the harder hunts in end game and specifically the deeply volatile hunts which will always have you only having a single thread this is how many times you can fail and get knocked out and get carted and in those hunts you cannot fail once so this will be permanently active in the hardest hunts which is wonderful further we do have desperation reducing our defense but boosting attack at seven percent that is a worthy trade let me tell you which we also have on the ember plume gloves further we also get strong arm spirit which means when we go for that hunter's arm to get our thread back we're gonna have five percent extra chance on critical hits for quite a while i'm always hunters arming during a hunt once i need some more thread and this gives me extra reason to do so we also have critical draw which means those draw attacks say on the strong attacks hey an extra five percent critical 
critical hits there. Again, brilliant. Now we have the Draconic Body Armor for your legs. This is the final boss leg piece. This comes with Rude Health at 12%, meaning we're less likely to suffer an ailment, which is nice. But most importantly, it's a 10% battle spirit, meaning whenever a Kimono is enraged, which is about half of the hunt, you're dealing more damage. Lastly, the boots is kind of a personal choice. These are the King Tusk boots, which provide me with just damage and a bit of health, which is great because it's just consistent. But you could also consider other options. The Ember Plume boots are a good option, also with health boost, but this has self-control and strong arm spirit. Further crit and also more stamina recovery speed if you feel you need that in those harder hunts. Or the Cobalt Lava Back Boots, which has the benefit of Tangle Recovery, but we have more importantly Grab Master and Resurrection. Resurrection being the most important skill here, it means when you take a killing blow, you just won't die, which is obviously quite good if you're dealing with some really hard hunts. This could help you, but I prefer the consistent damage increase of just having a bit more damage on Savage. Next, we have the interesting topic of the weapon and the weapon path you should take. As you can see, we are using the final boss weapon. And if I zoom out, this is the final boss weapon on the left side. You can even go to the right or the left. I follow this path through the one on the right all the way up from here. So it's quite the path, but honestly, there are worse paths that I've seen in different builds. As you go through though, these are the inherited skills you're gonna want. Switchblade Boost Fury comes from the last one here anyway, but you're gonna be looking for Manifestation Release, Stock Slash, Jewel Master, and Desperation. The skill Manifestation Release is what's actually major here. It means our attack is way bigger, 64% on just the weapon alone. We have a Talisman to help this further, but this is what's causing the Unbound Gauge when you actually pull out the whip to be expended a lot quicker. As you saw, we're able to expend this with the full DPS combo, so we're totally fine as long as we're using that correctly. And the benefit is a shed load of damage. As we talked about, we have plenty of desperation in this set, so we take more damage, but we have way more damage ourselves. Stock Slash is what's actually carrying here. That little 10% that we have is helping us with the gauge depletion. As you saw with the burst combo, we have just enough to get the full burst combo off and then a triple crate, and then it's basically done. That is because we have Stock Slash that's giving us just enough to allow for that. Switchblade Boost Fury comes from the final weapon that we actually upgrade to, boosting our special attack, which is obviously really important. We have 10% of Jewel Master. This gives us a nice 10% increase to how fast we actually build the gauge, which is really important. And then we have that other inherent skill we've not talked about yet, Battle Spirit at 10%. This boosts our attacks against Enraged Kimono. So again, further damage about 10% for half the fight. That's really nice, stacking with the one on our armor. For you to pause the video and take a look though, this is the top half of our upgrade tree. And here is the bottom half of the upgrade tree path. You can recreate this and grab those skills that I mentioned on the way. Now it's time to talk about our five talisman. Now, because this is an RNG system, the chance of you having the same talisman as me is very unlikely. And I don't necessarily have the best ones. What I am doing is I'm targeting the skills that we're getting from our weapon and armor because those are what we want. So if you can find any of those, that's great. So I have one with 5% final blow here. This is the thing that's increasing my power when a kimono is toppled, which is obviously great. Sleight of Hand Fury is going to boost attack for a while after we conjure a Karakuri. So we are doing crates slams and also using fusion karakuri so that's great we've got another one here boost the power of attacks incorporating basic karakuri this means when i do a crate jump it just enhances the power of that by the four percent we have another final blow here at six percent and then there is my last talisman which is one that you can get and you should get because it's a consistent one we get this by picking up a relic this gives us an extra 11 percent on the manifestation release further powering our attack let me show you where to go pick up that relic which you should absolutely do to get yourself the talisman you're going to want for your katana then we're going to need to come to the canyon the canyon being the leftmost kind of autumn map and we're going to want this building with this marker right here on the northern point of kind of the village area if i zoom all the way out you can see i'm right here near the center of the map just a bit northeast you'll find it on one of the layers of the building it's kind of an awkward one the sword is against the the wall there but as you can see all i did was do a quick crate jump and then quickly stake my way over and then i'm actually at the right level it's basically the one above the highest point of this building but anyway let's pick it up and there we go rover's talisman the great blade all right now that we've discussed the build here is the last aspect of a build you should consider which is going to be your basic karakuri and which fusions should you use i keep it generally pretty simple for my katana hunts i have torch spring stake 
and crate. Now, of course, the triple crate is going to be an important part of our max DPS hits. It's obviously a big hit just on its own, but then when we're unbound, it's crazy. So that's obviously vital. Torch is one that comes in handy when you're dealing with a kimono that's weak to fire, and also it allows us to firework, which is really important against any flying kimono, which is a good amount of those. Spring allows us to be generally mobile, evade things, and even use the iframes as we use the spring, which you can enhance for your talent tree, which is nice, but we do need this for a fusion karakuri. Lastly, I have stake, which allows me to die, not die from fall damage, saving me, and also jump about or even jump to the kimono and maybe go for Hunter's arm with that, which is nice, but we care more about the stake for its transformation with fusion than anything else. Here are the fusion karakuri that I'm using though. So two stakes and a crate, two stakes and a crate. That's what leads to the trap. That's absolutely vital with this playstyle, allowing us to guarantee get to that weak point, be it tail, be it head, and go to town with our burst combo. It lasts the right amount of time, so it's absolutely required to use that fusion karakuri. The other fusion karakuri I use the most is the harpoon, which is two springs and a stake, and then two springs and a stake. This will auto lock onto the kimono and blast it, dealing nice damage and also staggering it. This creates opportunities and windows for me to go to town on the kimono, usually with that basic combo of the twin blade slash slom, maybe two, maybe even three times if I feel I can get away with it. And this helps me build my gauge in a safe and consistent way. Those are the two main fusion karakuri that I use my thread on, but there's utility in other things like the fireworks or like the bomb that we can use with this setup. But that's why I use what I use. But there you have it. That is our build and overview. For another final look, this is the gear that I'm wearing. And you can see all of the skills that I have with this set at the bottom right, on the three tabs that I've just tabbed through. You can pause the screen if you need to. This brings us to the pure kimono path though, using the armor that we have, which as you can see, the head and the chest piece are in kimono path, pushing us to the final tier of pure kimono path, just barely to activate all those skills. This is vital for deaf ears, desperation, and solar protection. I hope this build video has been useful to to you and you get good help from this. I hope this gives you the tools to enjoy Katana in the end game though. And if this video has helped you, then please do drop a like. It helps us a lot with the algorithm and we do put a lot of work into this type of stuff. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye